Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I've prepared for you something a little bit different than usual. We're going to talk about cameras and more specifically we're going to be looking at two of the most popular point and shoot cameras for creators, vloggers and YouTubers. The Sony ZV-1 and the Canon G7X Mark II. So let's get out of the studio and let's get started. Starting with the very basics, the Sony ZV-1 can record 4K files, while the Canon G7X Mark II records in full HD. Well, we should not forget that the ZV-1 is a camera that came out only last May, while the G7X Mark II is a few years older and I'm pretty sure it came out in May 2016. So we are talking about a 4 year difference here, which in camera terms means a lot. However, in my opinion, the G7X Mark II is a very good camera and still stands its ground. The Sony ZV-1 features a 24 to 70 mm full frame equivalent lens. It also comes with a great flip out LCD screen that works great in combination with a microphone you might want to mount on your camera, allowing you to check your framing without having your view being restricted. And something extra that I really love in the ZV-1 is that it features a recording red light that helps you know when you are recording and it helps you avoid missing takes because you forgot to hit record. Well, been there, done that. The G7X Mark II on the other hand has a maximum aperture range of f1.8 to 2.8 and equivalent focal range of 24 to 100 millimeters. The G7X Mark II has a tilt-up LCD screen instead with touch capabilities, but the camera has no microphone input. But we're gonna get back to the sound capabilities later on in this video. One of the most important features when it comes to point and shoot cameras is definitely the autofocus. The Sony ZV-1 has a fast hybrid autofocus system that combines both face detection and contrast detection autofocus. It has a super reliable object tracking and video eye autofocus tracking which can be really important when shooting your own videos or when vlogging. The G7X Mark II doesn't have face detection autofocus, but its contrast detect system is generally fast and reliable. You can also use the touch autofocus, which basically means that you can touch your screen to pick the subject you want to be in focus and you can produce nice cinematic focus poles. When it comes to tracking mode though, I would say that the ZV-1 is definitely the winner, as its video eye autofocus tracking is simply incredible. The ZV-1 also offers a product showcase mode for super fast focusing on products, making it perfect for unboxing videos and generally showing products on camera. And also, check how this feature works even if you do not block your eyes with a product. Impressive, right? On top of that, the Sony ZV-1 also has the defocus mode. This basically automatically adjusts the aperture for you so that you get a blurry background or in other words, the famous bokeh. The ZV-1 also has an amazing new feature called defocus mode and what it actually does is that it, oh, it also has a dedicated button for it. I'm gonna click on it right now, check it out. And do you see the difference? So what it actually does is that it makes your background blurry and your image looks more cinematic, it makes your subject pop out. So this is really, really cool. And the good thing is that you don't need to know anything about your settings. You don't need to know how to set your aperture and stuff like that. You just click on it and you get this nice blurry background, which is actually pretty, pretty cool. And this is with and without. And one more time, with and without it's pretty pretty cool moving on to one of my favorite topics color canon is known for having great color science and the g7x mark ii also has the famous canon look with punchy saturated deep colors that look gorgeous straight out of the camera one of the biggest complaints about sony on the other hand used to be the color science However, Sony re-engineered their color science, so the ZV-1 comes with improved colors and most importantly, improved skin tones. 
the colors are now natural and vibrant. And if you're willing to go a step further with your color grading, on top of that, the Sony ZV-1 offers a wide range of 10 professional picture profiles, including the S-Log and the HLG profiles, that offer the high dynamic range you need in order to color grade your footage in post-production and achieve great results. When it comes to stabilization, the Sony ZV-1 has two modes, the steady standard mode and the active steady mode, which is more cropped in. So here we are with the ZV-1. This is how it looks without any stabilization on. And yeah, what, what do you guys think? And let's activate the settings for the image stabilization to check how it looks. So here it is. We're using the standard image stabilization mode on the ZV-1. This is how it looks. What do you think, guys? And this is the active mode, so it's supposed to be the best one, but it's quite cropped. Let's run a little bit to see if it's gonna, how does it look. I'm walking pretty fast at the moment. I actually think it's pretty good. Yeah, I know quite a few people complain that it's very cropped, so it's very hard to vlog this way. But yeah, I get that point, but on the other hand, I'm walking really fast at the moment and it looks pretty good. Yeah? And going down the stairs. Ooh! <laughs> All right. So this is it. The Canon G7X Mark II provides three stabilization levels, low, standard and high. With a low option, you get in-lens stabilization only. With the standard mode, you get a combo of in-lens and digital stabilization. And with a high option, you get in-lens and enhanced digital stabilization. So this is the vlogging mode for the G7X Mark II. We are currently recording on the widest angle this camera can go. So this is 24 millimeter. And I'm using no stabilization at the moment. So this is how it looks without stabilization on. And this camera has three stabilization modes and I think it's time to check them out. So let's see how they look. Okay, right now I have activated the image stabilization mode low, which means that the camera does in-lens stabilization at the moment. And I don't know, what do you think, how it looks? I actually think it looks pretty good. And let's check the even more advanced settings. And now this is the next mode, which is the standard mode. It's a little bit more advanced and this is how it looks. And now I'm going to switch to the high image stabilization mode. Let's check this one out, which is actually the last one. And this is the last setting for the G7X. So this is the high image stabilization mode. And I think it looks very nice. Let's walk a little bit faster to see it. Yeah, this is how it looks. I think it looks very nice, but it's just too cropped. Another area I wanted to test was the low light performance of the two cameras. And the results were quite interesting, I have to admit. The Sony ZV-1 comes with a built-in directional three-capsule microphone that captures clear audio in front of the camera and fewer distracting ambient sounds. It also comes with a windscreen that can be mounted to the hot shoe when shooting outdoors and this helps a lot with windy conditions. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you're looking for a more high-quality sound, this camera also has a microphone input giving you the ability to connect an external mic. The G7X Mark II does not have an external microphone input and you can only use the camera's built-in microphone. However, after a lot of complaints about that, Canon added a microphone input on the G7X Mark III, which is the latest G7X generation. 
Some extra features that you might want to know is that the ZV-1 has no recording limit. This is absolutely great as you do not need to worry about your camera stopping in the middle of your shoot. Depending on what type of videos you do, this might be a lifesaver. For the G7X Mark II though, the maximum continuous recording is around 30 minutes, which is actually not that bad. Regarding the battery life, the ZV-1 claims to be able to handle 45 minutes of actual movie recording, which is not great if you think that other tasks such as playback, photography, etc. might drain your battery's life sooner than that. However, on the positive side, this camera features a connection for charging the battery inside the camera even while you're recording. The G7X Mark II, on the other hand, claims that its battery life when it comes to actual shooting is around 55 minutes. Well, still better performance compared to Sony. Right now on Amazon, the Sony costs 665 pounds and the G7X Mark II, 540 pounds. So what you should do? Should you upgrade? Should you not upgrade? Or which one should you get? Well, it's up to you really. If you're planning to get one of the two, I would personally give the extra money to get the ZV-1, as it's a newer camera with more capabilities, incorporates more advanced technology, and at the end of the day, it's future-proof, which for me, it's something I take seriously into consideration. If you already have a G7X Mark II though, I would say make your decision depending on your priorities. If you feel that the G7X Mark II covers your needs, then you can still do your videos perfectly well with it, as it's a very reliable and good quality point and shoot camera. However, if you want the extra technology that the ZV-1 has to offer, then it might be the time for you to upgrade. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.